Hi, in this video we are going to look at how to find the standard deviation for a set of numbers. Um, now I'm going to show you how to find the standard deviation for a population and a sample. So let's say we have this set of numbers right here. Okay, I gave you a worksheet that can help you. Um, it'll go through the steps with you on how to solve. And uh, it also has a table and some other helpful things. So let's start. Um, first, what we have to do here, it says find the mean or the average by adding up the numbers and dividing by how many you have. And we'll call that n, the number of numbers we have. Okay, so if we go back over here, all right, we'll figure out what the total is. Now I've already calculated this uh, total, but um, you can do that on your calculator here, and I'll just show you in here. I put all the numbers in here, and I ended up getting um, 675. So um, for this right here, the sum of all the data, we're going to go into step one here, finding the mean. It says the sum of all the data, or the total, is 675. Okay? How many numbers do you have? What's the, what's the amount of numbers that you have? So now if we look back at our data set again, we can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we have 9 numbers. So here the question is how many numbers do you have? What's n? It's 9. And then the mean is the total divided by how many numbers you have. So we're going to do on here on our calculator we're going to do 675 divided by 9. So I'm just going to do that right now. 675 divided by 9, and that ends up being 75. So that's my mean. Okay, so that was all. We had to find the average of the mean. Okay, and again, then another uh, symbol for the mean is x bar. Okay, you'll see that in... Um, the table we have here, and it can also be seen as the Greek uh, letter mu. Okay, it looks kind of like this funky little symbol here. Um, but yeah, I wrote that up here for you. The mean is written as x bar, and it can be also seen as mu. You'll see that later in the modules. Um, so once you've found the mean, the next step is to subtract each number from the mean and take the absolute value. And I said, in other words, find the distance of each of your numbers from the mean, okay? So if we look at our data, we're going to write in each uh, one of our data, and we're going to see how far is it from 75. That's what we want to do. How far is it from our mean, okay? So... What we're going to end up doing here is writing in each of our things. So let's write in 69, 71, 70, 88, 80, 78, 75, 74, and 70. Those are all of our numbers. Okay. And so now I want to find out how far are they from the mean. So in your mind, you're thinking 75 minus 69, or you can think 69 minus 75. I, I tend to just think about the bigger number minus the smaller number. And that's going to give me the distance of each of those numbers from the mean. So if I think about how far away these two numbers, um, 69 and 75, are from each other, that's 6. Okay, how far is 71 from 75? It's 4 away. 70 and 75, 5 away. Now this one's a little bit bigger, 88 and 75. That's 13. 80 and 75 is 5. 78 and 75 is 3 away. 75 is 75. They're, they're not separate by any means, so we're just going to say the distance from those is zero, and that can happen if it's the same number as the mean. Uh, 74 is one unit away from 75, and 70 is five units away. OK, 
Okay, so um, now we have all of these numbers in here, and um, it says here, once we do uh, step two, okay, so step two was subtract each number from the mean and take the absolute value, or find the distance of each number from the mean. Step three, we're going to use this table to square the results. We're going to square those distances that we found. All right, so six squared is what we're doing. So six squared, that's 36. Four squared, 16. Five squared is 25. And I'm just going to keep on squaring these 13 squared, five squared, three squared is nine, zero squared is zero, one squared is one, and again, five squared is 25. All right. Um, okay, so um, the sum of the squares, we can find that in just a second. Um, we're going to want to do that for the next step, but I can go ahead and find that answer here. Why not? Um, so if I want to add all of these up, um, I'm going to do that real quick. And I just added up uh, 25, 25, and 25 to get 75. I added up 36 and 16. Let's do 169 and 9. Let me go back here just a second. There we go. Um, and I get 306. So 306 is my um, sum of all the squares. Okay? So, step four. Step four is find the variance. Okay, so for um, a population, if this set of numbers right here, we're going to do both actually. We're going to treat it as population or a sample just to show you. Um, let's say though, like I said, let's say at first, let's say this is a population, okay? So this set of data represents a population, maybe like an entire class or something. All right, so, um, so our, for our first case, we're going to consider population. So you're going to write, when you, when you um, do your worksheet, you're going to put here, um, for finding the variance, you're going to say whether it's a population or the sample. And what you're going to do is you're going to follow the, um, the instructions on here. So for a population, you would take that total, 306, the sum of the squares, and divide it by how many numbers you have. Remember, we have nine numbers. Um, if it's a sample, which we'll do next, um, I'll show you how to do that. It's a little bit different. So again, for the, if it's a population, let's say this is a population. So um, again, the sum of the squares is 306, and we would divide that by n, or 9. Okay, so 306 divided by 9 is actually 34. That's very nice. All right, so if we were to, again, have a population, that would be our variance. It would be 34. And then once we did that, we would be able to find the standard deviation by taking the square root of that answer. Okay, so again, I'll just write this in here. So it's for step five. Okay, so for population, if it's a population, you would be doing the square root of 34, okay? And the square root of 34 is 5.83, okay? So that would be your standard deviation. That would be the average of how far each of these numbers is from the mean, okay? That's what that represents. Standard deviation is like the average of how far each of the numbers is away from the mean. Um, so for example, like for 69, you know, it's six away from the mean. Okay, that's pretty close to what this says, 5.83. But it's basically saying that 
the distance, all the distances, the average of all the distances is about that, um, that far away from the mean. Okay, so we considered that, uh, this set of data right here, we considered this set of data as a uh, population. Now let's consider it as a sample. Let's say this is only a fraction of the number of people in a class, or maybe um, somebody just took a sample of some of the scores um, in a group. Okay, so if that's the case, for step four, to find your variance, you're going to use this uh, part here for sample. Add up your squared numbers, which we found was 3 or 6, and div divide by 1 less than how many you have. So instead of dividing by 9, you would divide by 8. That's the only difference with these two. So again, if we have a sample, we would take 3, 0, 6, and we would divide it by 1 less than 9, which is 8. Okay? So if I take um, 306 and divide it by 8, I get 38.25. That's my variance if it's a sample. And then again, just go back up to step 5. To find the standard deviation, you take the square root of that result. So again, if this was a sample, this represented a sample, we would take the square root of 38.25. So I'm going to take the square root of 38.25 and I get 6.18. About, again, it's really close to the other one. It's just the difference between whether your data was a population or a sample. But again, this tells you that um, the variance, um, or I should say the, the data, the average distance from each of your data to the mean is about 6. Kind of the same as this, but again, um, just basically all you have to do again is follow the steps, use the table, and then again the only thing you'll have to decide, just remember, the only thing you'll have to decide is whether it's a population or a sample, and just look for key words to help you um, to know which one it is, and then that will um, help you to decide for step four which formula you need to use. And then again in step five, once you've found your answer for step four, which is your variance, you're going to take the square root of your result.